Yo, let's talk about my inventory, how I keep track of everything. Fat Man Scoop, Brooklyn Clan. What's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. And right now, you're watching The Sensei, the number one, the king, my dude, Big Brando. You taught me, personally, me, Fat Man Scoop. All you gotta do is keep your mouth closed and your ears open, listen to the man talk. That's knowledge personified right there, and I wouldn't trust nobody else but my dude, Big Brando. And I said it, Fat Man Scoop, Big Brando! Let's go! What's happening, everybody? Boy, Big Brando, and today let's talk about my inventory and how I stock my blank t-shirts and how I keep track of everything. Now, this is a question that I kept getting in my comments, but what I'm starting to notice now is a lot of people are asking me if I'm using a certain app to keep track of all my inventory. I'm not too familiar with a lot of inventory tracking apps, I use Shopify. Shopify lets you upload your product and then it will say how much is in the inventory per size or whatever you have. And usually that's what I answer people back with. It's like, hey, I use Shopify and they track my inventory. But what a lot of people are struggling with is they see how I just stock blank t-shirts and then I use transfers and then I control my inventory that way and they're kind of confused on how that all works. So I guess in this video, I'll break down everything that I do. Hopefully it helps somebody out or sheds a little bit of light on my operation and maybe you can mimic your operation to be something like mine or maybe figure out what works for you and customize the way I run things to make it work for you. All right, so you guys know that I use transfers. The reason I use transfers is one, it's easy and it's less messy than actual screen printing. Two, I hate pre-printing a lot of my t-shirts because when you pre-print something and you put it on your shelf, now you're forced to sell that item because it's already printed and you gotta get it out the door. Now I hate that feeling. I used to operate that way all the time. Also, when you pre-print stuff, it takes up room on your shelving and on your rack. So now you have 12 small pre-printed of this design, 12 medium pre-printed of this design, so on and so on and so on. But what if you don't sell any of those smalls and mediums? Those smalls and mediums still take up room on your racks. They're printed with designs that you can't move. So now you're stuck with that inventory. So the way that I fix this is I control my inventory by only stocking the blank t-shirts and then I stock the transfers and as orders come in, I pull the blank t-shirt off the rack, I pull the transfer, press it down, ship it out. Now, a lot of people get this idea. They also get this mentality and they wanna operate the same exact way. Where a lot of people get stuck is with the inventory part. So let's try to use simple numbers. These numbers aren't actual to what I actually do, but the concept is still the same. So let's say I'm operating out of my room I only have space to stock so many blank t-shirts. So let's say you got a dozen small, dozen medium, dozen large, dozen extra large, dozen double X. This is all you have space for in your room. But let's say you have three different design offerings on your website. This is how I inventory my stuff on Shopify. I have a dozen small, but I have three design offerings. So each one of those will have a quantity of four. Each design will have a quantity of four small four medium. Why four? Three times four, right? So you have 12 total blank t-shirts and a size small. You have three different design offerings. So I would put four one design, four on the next design, and four on the last design. That totals up my 12 small t-shirts and I do that for every single size. So as you start selling stuff on your website, right? Like, all right, cool, you know what? I sold two larges of this design, two larges of this design. But let's say your last design, nobody's buying. You also know that your other two designs are very popular. On the back end, you can always take quantity from the design that's not selling and then move it up to the popular designs. That's what I do all the time. If something's not moving, I'll take quantity from somewhere else and put it somewhere where people are buying. Now, as those sizes start to sell out, I start ordering more. If I sell one t-shirt, I re-up with two more t-shirts. If I sell four t-shirts, I re-up with eight t-shirts. That's a minimum of what I do. This is how you figure out what your popular designs are and what your popular sizes are. Also, visually, you have to see your shelving and your racks on where your t-shirts are. You guys see that I put a lot of my t-shirts in those buckets or those black bins or the flip down front bins. That's so I could visually see how many t-shirts I have left. If it's close to the top, then I know I have four dozen in there. If it's starting to get to halfway point, then I know I only have two dozen t-shirts left, so on and so on. 
That's how I know when I'm starting to get low on certain sizes. I start to fluctuate my quantities on my Shopify site on the back end. Now, is this the only way to run your Shopify site or track your inventory? No, there's probably easier ways. There's probably apps out there that do this for you. This is what works for me. I got a lot of my game from the streets, so I'm a very, very visual person, but I also live by common sense. If I see a product moving, I put more quantities behind the popular product. If I see a design not moving, that's where I pull from, right? I have a design that's not really moving, but I have two designs that are moving. Now I start to juggle my quantity based on that. I feed the popular design and I pull from the not so popular design. This is just how things go because every design isn't a winner. In your head, you're probably thinking when people come to my site, they're going to buy every single design and every single size. It's not how it works out. People gravitate towards what they like. You as the business owner have to track those habits. You have to see, all right, you know what? This design's really moving right here. Let me pull quantity from here and put it towards this one. And that's just a temporary band-aid until you re-up on more t-shirts. So as you start moving quantity to the popular stuff, that's when you place the order for more blank t-shirts and you start to fulfill those gaps that are in your racks or on your shelves. Now, another question people are gonna have is like, hey, how many t-shirts should I stock up? You stock up whatever you can afford. Don't break the bank on it. Don't go broke trying to get rich. If you only have money for 12 t-shirts, stock those 12 t-shirts. That's all it is. If you only have money to stock up one of each size, the customer will never know that. On your website, there's only one quantity. They don't see the quantity. Once that t-shirt's bought, it's sold out. This is gonna drive up scarcity for your brand or your business. And then it's gonna make people react like, oh man, next time this thing's in stock, I'm gonna have to jump on it because it sells out so fast. They don't know that you only have one of each size. They don't know that. They don't have to know that. All they see is, is it sold out or is it in stock? So you use that to your advantage. Now it's in your favor. See what I mean? You have the power to control your inventory. Please utilize common sense. If things are moving, things are good, your shelves are starting to look a little bare, start to re-up. When my buckets get low, that's when I start to re-up. Sometimes I re-up weekly. Sometimes I re-up every other week. It all depends how fast things are moving. Sometimes I'm picking up t-shirts two, three times out of the week. Because when you have that feeding frenzy, when you have that popular design that people are buying, you gotta ride that wave out. Because if the momentum dies on there, it's hard to build that momentum back up. So when things are going good, you just gotta keep feeding the crowd. That's all you gotta do. But not every design out the gate is gonna turn every design into a feeding frenzy. Sometimes you're gonna launch three or four designs and nothing's gonna move because nobody's interested in it. That's just the way the game goes. So remember when things are moving and you're selling Pay attention to what popular designs are selling. Pay attention to what the popular sizes are. That's what you double, triple up on. Those are the sizes that are constantly moving. If those are the designs constantly moving, that's where you re-up on your transfer. That's where you re-up on those popular t-shirts to keep feeding the masses. If nobody's buying the size smalls and mediums, don't re-up on the size smalls and mediums. You have them there in stock, cool. But if nobody's buying them, no harm, no foul, because you didn't press nothing on them yet. They're still blank t-shirts. Maybe a design that you release four months from now will be popular with the size smalls and mediums, and that's cool. But as long as you don't press nothing on them, it's just a blank t-shirt and it's there. You also know you don't have to re-up on that, but the larges, extra larges, double Xs that are moving constantly, that's what you keep re-upping on. Double up, triple up on those, because those are the ones that are moving. So to answer this age old question of, do you use a certain app or how do you track inventory? I use common sense. Visually, I need to see what my blank t-shirts look like. Visually, I need to see what's selling. And from there is how I keep things rolling. Hopefully this makes sense for a lot of people. I know a lot of people want to use apps and different softwares and stuff like that to streamline their process, but I'm old school, man. This is what works for myself. This isn't the only way to run your business. This is just what works for myself. Hopefully I laid this out without too much rambling and hopefully I made it easy for somebody to understand my thought process because it makes sense in my head, but maybe when I articulate it or when I speak about it, it doesn't make sense to certain people, but hopefully somebody out there understands the type of English I'm speaking, all right? If you got any questions, make sure you leave it in the comments. Follow me on Instagram, BigBrandoTV. Catch you guys on the next one, man. Yeah.